guys, my name is Pixie, and today we're going to monetize our app using the Add Mob feature in Appy Builder. This is a component that you will not find in App Inventor, but the design environment is the same. So if you've been using App Inventor, you'll have no trouble navigating through Appy Builder's website. The first thing we're going to do is create or sign into our Add Mob account. You may be taken to this authentication screen once you sign in. AdMob generates a PIN number and sends it to your mailing address. The instructions state that a PIN number must be entered before any payments can be issued to you. If you put in a fake address and you receive a payment, then your real money is going to be sent to a fake address. You'll be reminded to enter a PIN each time you sign into the website. Could take a few weeks before you receive your PIN in the mail, but you can start creating your ads right away. Click on Apps from the left side menu, then select the Add App option. Indicate whether you have published your app. I have not put this app on Google Play Store, so I'm gonna select no. Now let's add a name for this app and choose a platform. The first step is complete. We have a unique ID associated with this app, which we can access later if we need to. So let's start making a banner for this app. The ad format gives us four different choices. We'll cover these other options in separate videos, but for the ad mob component, we'll need to select the banner option. We can change a few settings for our banner ad. I'm gonna keep the first two options for the ad type. We receive a warning that changing these options could result in decreased revenue, which means we could potentially make less money. So naturally, we want both image and text in our ad so users can click on the ads that interest them. You can change the refresh settings if you need to control the ad refresh rate, but I'm gonna keep it as Google optimized. You can also customize the way your ad appears in your app by changing the ad's colors. You can use a few preset colors or you can enter a hexadecimal value if you want to match a specific color scheme that flows with your app's theme. Lastly, give this ad a name and click the save button. The implementation instructions guide you through the process of using your banner ad inside your app. The great thing about Abbey Builder is that all of that work is already done for you with the ad mob component. The only thing you need is the ad unit ID. So let's copy and paste this ID into Notepad so we can use it in just a second. If you lose this ID, you can always retrieve it from the Add Units menu. This lists all of the ads that you've created for your app. Click on the Add Unit ID icon, which will automatically copy your ID to your clipboard. We're now done with the Add Mob portion, but before we get into the design, I highly recommend learning a little more about Add Mob. You'll find a link to this documentation in the video description, which you can read at your leisure. There's a short video you can watch that basically helps you decide where you should place your banner ad in relation to your app design. The most important thing to take away from this documentation is that too many accidental clicks on your banner ad could result in your ad mob account being suspended or a decrease in your revenue. So let's keep that in mind when we start our design. Open up Appy Builder and click on screen one. Set the sizing property to responsive. Your ad won't display properly if this option is set to fixed. For now, I'm gonna set the vertical alignment to bottom. Because as we saw earlier from the documentation, I don't want to accidentally click on my own ad too many times. The best practices video recommends that we set our banner apart from our design. So let's use a horizontal arrangement named banner container. I'm using this component as an option. Maybe I want to add a fun border around my banner that matches the style of my app instead of having a giant gap in my design. This still gives me a little more room to work with so my users don't accidentally click on the ad at the bottom of the screen when they're just trying to interact with the app. I can now place the add mob component into my horizontal layout and I'll change the name to banner. All you need to do is paste your add unit ID into the property window. This component has a few more options that you can play around with. If you're creating an education game for elementary students, you probably want to check the option to target children. Additionally, if you're creating an app for adults, you probably want to leave this option unchecked. You might also like to target a specific age or gender. You don't need to use any blocks for the ad to display, but let's quickly take a look at the block section. As with all components, the green blocks allow you to change or access component properties. We also have six events specific to this component and four procedures. A professional app should utilize some of these events. What happens when the ad is closed, collapsed, or expanded, or what if it doesn't load at all? You might need to change the way certain components look on your app. Since we placed the add mob component inside a horizontal arrangement, we could simply toggle the visibility of our horizontal arrangement so that the banner and its container disappear from view. These events aren't necessary to display your ad, but they will help you control your ad if something goes wrong or if you just need to do something when the ad loads. Now that we're a little more familiar with the component and its properties, we can run the Appy Builder companion and see our banner ad. If your ad displayed properly, then you're all set. 
If you see a black bar instead of an advertisement, that's okay. A newly created ad unit ID could take up to 48 hours to register. Mine usually takes about an hour or two. In the meantime, you could use a test banner ID. During app development, I would highly recommend placing the ad unit ID in your ad mob component with the test banner ID. This way you don't accidentally click on your live ad. Remember that accidental clicks will charge the advertising company real money and we don't want that during testing. So it's important to use the test banner ID while you're still creating your app. Don't forget to check out the Appy Builder community where you can discuss projects you're working on, stay up to date on current topics, and access tutorials created by community members. All right, guys and gals, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to thumbs up the video and have a great day. Bye.